In our last video, we took a look at just regular process injection. But in this video, we're going to take a look at DLL injection. In DLL injection, we're going to take the address space of an already running different process, take our shell code, inject it into that process space, something that many, many malware engineers take advantage of. So without further ado, let's jump right in. As I mentioned in the intro, this is one of the most powerful and common techniques used by both malware and legitimate software. And our goal is today is to make notepad.exe pop a message box that we control. Let's think of this as a walk before you run type of malware understanding. And as I mentioned earlier in my previous video, we injected the shell code into our own program. And today we're making that next step where we're going to inject the code into a completely separate running process. So how do we do that? We start with our DLL. I have it here listed as DLL main.c. When we compile this, it will become message box DLL dot DLL. A dynamically linked library containing code that basically most of us probably realize that other programs can load and run. Every single DLL has a main entry of DLL main. Think of it as equivalent to the main function in a normal .exe file. So the OS will call this function when the DLL is loaded, unloaded, or when new threads are created. This right here is basically the switch statement. What's the reason for calling the DLL? We're only interested in one right now, and that is the DLL process attach, where we further will utilize this message box to provide an I was injected text pop up with suit up and hack on the title. So this DLL is just waiting to be loaded. And as you see here, these additional case statements, we're just going to pass through to break. But truly, we're only interested in DLL, DLL process attach. All right. So with the DLL, we need the star of the show. And this will be the injector. And I'm going to show you injector.c. Let's first, we'll come back to this get process ID in a second, but here's our main function. The first thing that we're doing is assigning the path, the direct path to where the DLL file is. Now note, when you create this, you have to build and it will be automatically created. You won't have this basically without a build being done, building your solution. The process name that we're looking for is notepad.exe. Next, we're going to go ahead and call get process ID, which scans a system to find the process ID or PID for notepad.exe. In this instance, it will be searching for 5184. We already have it running here, but essentially get process ID, which is this code right up here. We'll go ahead and get it, the process ID, and hopefully it's found. But if not, could not find the process ID. We will then pass this on to open process. 
this is where we're asking the Windows kernel, hey, I need a handle for this process. If this fun, if this fails, which it will if you don't run as administrator, we can't go any further. And this is a time to note that this notepad was opened as run as administrator. We get the handle back. We're going to have our virtual alloc X or EX for extended, which allows us to allocate the memory into another process. We use our handle to create a small empty chunk of memory inside that notepad's address space, which, again, going back to the previous video, was marked as read-write. We then are going to do something similar to what we did in that first. We're basically going to call write process memory to copy our DLL path string into that empty space so that it's sitting inside Notepad's own memory. And when I talk about something similar, I'm talking about that we're seeing a lot of these API calls that are being used as a similar back and forth write process memory, virtual alloc, except in this one we are doing the extended. The next item that we're going to go ahead and obtain is going to be this git process address. Now this is a magic trick where we need to force notepad to run the load library function which is the standard Windows function for loading DLLs. But how do we find its address? Well, with kernel32.dll, which contains the load library, loaded at the same address, we can just find the address of the load library in our own injector. And that'll be the address, be the same inside Notepad. So basically, let me state that one more time. We're just finding the kernel 32 information in load library that's our foreign injector process because it'll be the same address as for notepad.exe. Finally, we're gonna use a create remote thread which is the final step. We use our handle to tell Notepad, hey, start a new thread, but instead of running a normal function, we tell this that we want it to execute at the address of load library that we just found. And what's the argument that we gave that new, fret, new thread? That was the address of the DLL path we wrote to its memory just a few moments ago. The result? we've just forced notepad to run command load library and this at this path here from one of its own process and what happens when that DLL is loaded DLL main fires and we get our message box and so without further ado let's jump in I've already built it we have our injector exe and I'm going to run it as administrator again we have notepad open as administrator so we'll click run as administrator of course I do why wouldn't I want to do that and now we still have notepad up but we also have that message box which states stood up and hack and I was injected make sure to stick around hit that like and subscribe button check out some additional videos that are recommended here shortly for you but we'll be back as we continue to build out our Windows internals knowledge base thank you